Good evening, everyone viewing. Thank you for joining our live. It it's been it's been a little while, but in today's live, we have three special guests, and hopefully today we'll have a, a very fruitful discussion and discuss about current trends in the market and our opinions on various topics. And uh, today we have Gar Grant. Hello. Yeah, he's a fellow YouTuber and research analyst. We have Mr. O'Neill Edwards, fellow YouTuber also, aka Blue Color. And we have Rowan Francis. Rowan Francis is a young entrepreneur and he's an analyst also. So you guys want uh, want to introduce yourself? Let's see how it I'll say hi to the say hi to the viewers. Let me in. Yeah. Well, as to me, you know, Lance, I don't introduce my thing already in you know, a blue color finance. You don't know. All right. All right. So. All right. So we're just going to begin the discussion right away. So. Um, I want to ask each person. I asked Rowan already. I think Rowan did off, was on our first live. So today I want to ask Mr. Gartbrandt, what, what is, could you describe your investment style or philosophy? You hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you good. All right, cool. So my investment style or strategy primarily reside where it is like dividend base. But also look for value companies that have good prospect for growth. Okay. However, as Warren Buffett normally says, you always have to invest in a circle of competence. So that just simply means what you know are the things that you know more about. A person I know that as humans we eat, I live for more, um, transport for more people hostage. So you know a toll road right here. So also there's a lot, of, uh, even banks. You basically uh, walk or talk or any transaction they have to do. Even if you go to ATM or so, they use banks. So I normally invest around those areas, but at first I like to see what is or how does the company affect me personally. So I know, as I say, I mentioned that I work at different institutions, but banking institutions per se. I use JMMD, I use them to buy IPO, use them to draw money. Some banks get paid. So if there are companies like that, that already take your money basically with fees. And so why not try investing that and get back a part of that? As well, I can't leave for more. Well, there's only one other way, which is the Mandela Road. Outside of that is the trans, which basically, you have to take the toll and it's a transaction you have to pay. So if you can get a part of that money back to yourself while investing in a good side company, then that's one way as well. Also the financials, primarily focusing on PE and PB, which as I say is relative relative valuation. So you have to have it against something else. However, if you're still using it, especially a company with low PE, the smaller it is, the better it is for you, the most part. So I normally invest around things that I know and a little finance to it. Good, that's a good description. I mean, you're, it seem like to me, like you're more go for the value, you're a value investor. But I mean, maybe I have a little twist to it. But what about you, it's a blue color? Last to me, you know, my investment strategy, very simple. As a grand said, first, you have to invest in a sub where you know. All right, but not only that, in terms of knowing, you have to understand how the business makes money. All right, so grant invest in a banks. All right, but a lot of people don't understand the operation of banks and how banks really make money. See, so for me, the first thing, I have to understand how the company make the money. And, and it's not just about the revenue. All company call it revenue, but all the, all the revenue falls to the bottom line because at the end of the day, it's the bottom line that will fall into the investor's pocket. 
So you have a lot of companies that make a lot of turnover, a lot of revenue, but no money now really come in at the investor's pocket, all right, because of the slim margins that exist. All right, so you have companies that have a lot of slim margins. Um, so with me, understanding the company, what the company does, and how the company really make money is, a, is the order of the day for me. And then as it relates to the portfolio now, what we realize is that when you're diversified, and a lot of people talk about having a diversified portfolio, but in a real life, if you want to get rich, you can't have a diversified portfolio. Based on my studies, I'm going to see them thinking under the finance book. When you diversify your portfolio, you're really maintaining your wealth. That's the reason for diversification of portfolio. Now, if you want to get rich, you have to like, um, whatever they call the word now, concentrate. Yeah, highly concentrate portfolio. So just take people who get rich. Most people who get rich are people of one stocks or two stocks, of one company or of most of their investment in one company. You get me? And that's the road for get rich. So me want to get rich. What me I gonna do? Me not gonna diversify around here. So if you go on Blue Collar Finance channel, we actually reveal our portfolio holdings. And Blue Collar only have two stock in our portfolio. Two stock. Two stock. Highly concentrated, high risk. That's how we do it over here, sir. <laughs> really? I mean, after I, I mean. I see some business people, they will own one business and they put 95 to 100 percent in their business. So I, I agree with you on that. Point. Exactly. But for, for some of us, no, we, I mean, if I have 10 good companies, I see I will try to go for the 10, but I'm not gonna go overboard. That so you you believe how many stuff do you think you would want to own guard? In, well, ah. Uh, when I just started to invest, oh my God. Yeah, I usually have maybe about 25 companies. Like when I literally just started to invest, nothing until I guess I remember it was one of the advisors were talking to me and I showed him a portfolio. And she said, You just have 10, 10 grand in each of them company or little, little. When you get dividend, the check where they must send you work more than the dividend where they must give. <laughs> I'm like, I took a re. Valuation and everything. As I right now, I only have seven companies, and there are seven companies in different industry. Although two of them is in finance and two is in food, but predominantly in different industries. So I have one company like Grace, which for me invest in Grace. You know, practically invest in every industry because they have food, they have finance. They are they have a lot of other. Um, category. So I personally have seven right now and probably for the next, I don't know, five to six years, it might just be those three adopting those like, until they start so many of the financial statements and stuff they show. Yeah. Uh, they say that. All right. So all right. I mean, Mr. Rowan Francis, how about you? What, what's your style? And just to a recap, and how many stocks, who do, who do, you, want to, do you want to share how many stocks? Do you own right now? You're, you're mute. You're mute. Um, could you check the mic? You're not hearing you so well. You're not hearing me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm hearing you good. All right. So currently, um, I mostly focus on one stack, and that's Berkshire Hathaway. Um, that's concentrated about 55% of our portfolio, but I also have a very another 34% well diversified. So I own some commodities, I own some gold, and I have 3% in a tail hedge risk. So that's keeping the convexity of the portfolio against the market. So normally I understand what only is saying. When it comes to wealth, it comes to owning a few high quality businesses. But that's incubate upon whether you can withstand the volatility. And if you understand, how, look at Bill Gates, Cascade Investments. Those guys are very diversified, owning a lot of bonds, a lot of very concentrated portfolio in companies like 
Canada and Pacific Railway. So it's all depending upon what is the achievement of the investor at the end where you're looking for. So I have, I have matured, I was like anyone once, but I have matured to the way I understand that I can develop strategic portfolio mix by owning a, a multitude of different um, facets of the economy and perform very well, like 20%, 21%. So it's all uh, incumbent upon and, 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 and invest on what they're really looking for. That's all I got to say. For me personally, if you invest for yourself and your family, and you're not putting the money in your trust funds, but you're doing a, a very high risk, like um, holding company, et cetera, try to do business good, you're good. Yeah. It, precisely. But, you know, that, I, like, I like that point that you just made. I like that point. Currently, I own like about I have 14 stocks. And I think that's quite high right now. Because the other day I was looking at my portfolio and I want to trim two stocks off. So it might it might might go down to 12, but I mean I just gonna stay there for right now. Cause I've more than half of my portfolio is in the US market. I find more value right now in the US market at, it, at this point in time. So I guess all of us have a bit, um, a bit different, we have a, a, a slight different strategy. And in the future, I want to reach a point where most of my, a, a lot of my um, wealth is stacked up in one or two stacks. You see the name, as God said, in the financial stock. Lance, Lance, let me say something to you. Yeah. When you concentrate the portfolio like ARK investments are what um, technology is doing, and the valuation is very much off. You can I mean, see the Titanic. Not, not here, your, your mic. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. I'm saying to you that when you concentrate your portfolio like Titanic, and not very much value. Mike, Mike. Yeah, you hear me now? Yeah, I'm hearing you. All right, so when you concentrate your portfolio like Titanic, right? Yeah. And I, I'm high, not high businesses that are very overvalued. You can sink, you can sink like the Titanic. Yeah, that's that's true. That's so true. it's all it's all incumbent upon valuation. If you if you own a, 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 a business like how Warren Buffett does it, and you can spin off the cash flow, it's really your compound in your wealth by owning other businesses using the cash flow. So it's very different. It's a very different ball game when you own the business and you can pull the money out. And invest it into something else, like what Warren Buffett has yeah, done. I agree with I'm you on that. Point, so, but uh, before before the O'Neill, you know right, that so. Warren Buffett current portfolio is, he has about forty three stocks, about around somewhere in the forties. So but, I know, but I, I know Warren Buffett said in his in his meeting that at this point in time, he don't expect Berkshire Hathaway to grow as it used to in the past. So I understand that, but at this point in time. I think I can find 12 stocks that is undervalued overall in between Jamaica market and the US market. So I think I want to work with that for now until the future where my change can be. Only what are you saying? Only. All right. So as I know, investment is about <coughs> sorry. It's about putting the money where you get the best return. Yeah. True? That's the idea. Yeah. And everybody will talk, sir. People have different goals, different opinions. But I'm not really buy into the argument there because at the end of the day, we all want to make money. Yeah. And the most money there is to be made that, that we really want to. Yeah, yeah. So, so my question to you now, you have 12 stock in your portfolio. Yeah. Some are performing better than some. Some yeah, yeah. are some are give a better return than others. Yeah, I agree with that. So why it is that you hold the one now and not give a good return? No, that's as I said before. Why, why, why not just let the doors are hold the one that we are getting the best return and increase the return? No, no, I agree with you. you know what? And and um, I'm going to trade two stocks at the moment, but I am looking now in the market and I see some new stocks, about two, three new stocks that I might want to invest in. So it, it kind of has me a way where I have to sit up now and see the best options to to. See the, the best top. The, I also have to yeah. look now to find the best choices. 
But sometimes it's a hard choice. And I think our products of choice. So you're going so on the psychology of finance and all. Yeah. And that is so, what we need to take out of the game. We need to be as objective as possible. You yeah. buy the stock and you love the company, but you now perform well. We we'll let it go and we we'll move on to something better. Yeah, so yeah. The day, it's about researching the company and understanding the company inside out and getting familiar with the company. You get me? And yeah. in that way, you know, you're not for all the bag of them. Yeah, but yeah. If, if it is that you don't really understand each company, you might want to diversify so as to lessen the risk. Yeah. So diversification, as a Warren Buffett would have said, is, is, is an insurance against Thank ignorance. You. Yeah, no, yeah, I, 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 I understand. I, I, you need for all a lot, but if you can dig in and understand the company, because a lot of time you know we overblow the risk. A lot yeah. of time we say the thing risky, and it is not as risky as we perceive it. So if I understand the risk, I really understand, and you know what I mean. Yeah, I understand. I agree with you, you know, but here's the thing: it depends on each investor. Because I was listening to Peter Peter Flinch, and he was yeah. saying that if you find two company or one company. He would invest in that one company, but if you find ten company, you would also do the same. So it's just up to your choice. I'm not gonna sure, pass sure, sure. fifteen for sure. Because um, so let me before you go any further, O'Neill, um, and Lance, um, Warren Buffett did when he find good companies, he always say he goes to own the entire business because he analyzes the business which is by the entire company, right? Yeah, yeah, true. So I understand what O'Neill is saying. But you have persons who are holding on to companies that are very overvalued. True. That's, that's one. Many True. persons are holding on to companies that are not performing right now because Mr. Market hasn't really understood the value as yet. And for value investors, you're going against a herd. That's two. Three, I would say, when you, if, if you have a billion dollars right now, it all incubates upon how you want to perform the portfolio. Why Bill Gates didn't hold everything in Microsoft and he will understand Microsoft. It's all depending upon one, the type of what you're going to do with the money. If you need to pull out 10% per, per year out of the portfolio, you cannot own everything into two companies. You have to have a little bonds. You have to go into real estate, etc. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, my, yeah. My, my, mm. That's why you're pointing about you yeah, missed my point, you know. Yeah, man, I know where you are, man. I know exactly no, where you are. Just, just one minute. Let me make it clear. Mm. What I really ask is mm. that if you're poor and not have the money, mm. you don't need to diversify. And the only way your money can grow. You see, if you're rich like Bill Gates, um, you need to diversify because that's maintaining your money. That's what diversification does. Mm. It keeps you rich. Preserve wealth. Preserve, exactly. You see, you know the right term. No, I know what you're saying. Why would you diversify if you don't have the wealth? What are you preserving? You're preserving poverty. You're preserving poorness. I get that, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just that. So that means you're, you're saying that, well, I consider over 20 stocks to be diversified. I think 12 stocks is still. diversified. <laughs> <laughs> over 20 you know, stocks, I think. You know, so, personally, I have, um, so, I did have 14, 15, 16 stocks. And then a way that, like, some of them normally drop, some of them normally go up. So, I um, did this actually just create an Excel sheet that basically it automatically updates. And then, like, whenever our stock is, like, down 10, 15%, as long as we believe in the company or so, I uh, buy into it. But then no manare down to seven stocks. So it's, I guess it's much more efficient for the most part. So it's just that the only predicament is that say the company down 20% or 30% and you buy the dip. Well, if the dip dip. So they have to buy in more and continue yeah, yeah, continue. Yeah. So that's just the only predicament. But as I say, if the value is good and everybody just not see it as yet. Then they can dollar cost average. That's what they call it, dollar cost average. But my dollar cost average strategy is buy it lower and lower as it goes. I don't normally buy it when it up or so. Yeah, but like the point there, Grant, you know what you call the dollar cost average in there? Semi dollar cost averaging. Semi dollar cost. And uh, my term still in there. You, you will never hear it. <laughs> so, what you really have to say is that the dollar cost on the downside. 
Yeah. You know, dollar cost on the upside, it don't make no sense either to me. When we hear people talk about dollar cost averaging and buying the stock when it's high, I say, what that for? You own the dollar cost on the downside. So you just need half of the dollar cost averaging. It's a good point. It's a good thing to think about it. I you know I don't really do the dollar cost averaging thing, you know. I don't follow it's a good strategy if I want to build discipline, I think. Sure, but sure. I don't really follow it up at all. I just invest when I have money. When I have money, I say I want to put some in the market. Mm -hmm. I look for some stacks. Sure, if I can sure. I find another hold it. That's all and, that's how I do it. And the same way, like where you do, you know, all right. The only thing is that my kind of a structure I work with, but only invest when I have the money. So whenever I get paid or whatever, um, for the month, as the Excel sheet, I update, I update, I update. So say my eye was spot on Grace Kennedy, but then by the time the money reached my hand for buy it, Grace Kennedy gone up 10, 15%, but may have JMMD down 15%. I just jump ship from Grace Kennedy and just buying a JMMD because I don't know, I'm still believing that a company there. And then whenever now, I see GK down, which it is right now, then we just buy in. And then sometimes it don't, there, there are times when literally my whole portfolio in a green because I'm consistent with it. And then I have to turn to what is the lowest green. So like say, everything up 10, 15%, and then like any company that is like up 5% or so, I have the cash rather than spend it, just buy in some more. Or I'm kind of focus on the dividend stocks because if you have a few websites where you can know when dividends are paid out, I think you have the JSA app and you also have simple Wall Street will literally notify you whenever an upcoming stock are come up based on history. And then if it's dividend you work with, you can just buy another company there too. So yeah, because I think the 24 for, for carriers. You know, the 24, you have to be a shareholder to get um, that dividend. And I knew that information from maybe like from the 10 or the 15. So kind of help, kind of help. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, definitely. So Rowan, um, over the years, how would you compare the US market versus the Jamaican market? You know, the Jamaican market, to, to be frank with you, it has performed better than the US market in the merit of show. The problem is I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't understand. You have your station selling time 40x. You know, I don't understand the valuation. That's my problem. So I don't still if I don't understand, I just don't understand it. You understand what I say? Yeah, I understand. I have friends who know enough money to the market and all that. Mm -hmm. And catch tax here and there, but I don't understand it that much. And the transparency, there's many conflict of interest and anything they saw. So, so yeah. Yeah. I'm, mostly, I'm mostly America you invest. Yeah, mostly overseas. Because you can't understand the Jamaican market. As me I say, I understand the valuation. But my one, my one, I invest in South Jamaica. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but yeah. Most, cool. of, most of them, when I invest, um, invest for other people. Food for them account. Um, I have long term holding. We holding for like the last five years. Now, that's what I mean. I most of the new stocks that are coming on the markets and most of the new hyped up investments. Some of them I don't understand them. I don't understand the valuation behind them. You understand what I'm saying? And I don't. And even the underwriting process. Yeah. You have you have underwriters are pumping stocks on the market. The investors and they are, so you have there's many conflict of interest. True, yeah. true. So what, what I, conflict of interest for real. So yeah. I, I I just want to leave you right here. I don't ask that more. I don't know if I'm working at them make a scene. Only ask that question. Why why every IPO are coming with that one dollar? Like we just find it kind of logical thing. Strange, like. Like because ah, man, you must find you must find that straight because them can't price uh, it at any way they want to price it. If they want to pay hundred dollar, they can't do that. No, you but I don't that. believe that every stock should be priced at one dollar. But as I say, that maybe a psychological thing because I believe some of these stocks they're overvalued. One dollar, all right. If they're priced, they are priced for speculation. That's it. No, hold up, hold up, one minute. <laughs> You're not no. Well, one minute. Think about value in the company, overall company. That are the first way you have to think about the stock. 
the value. So even though it's valued at one dollar, move away from the one dollar and think about what's the total value of the company. You get me? Because at the end of the day, <coughs> them can make the price, the IPO price, be anything they want it be. Them, if yes. they want it be one hundred dollar, them can do it. If they want it be fifty cent, them can do it. I mean, it was it was <coughs> the wind the wind farm. When the wind farm came out, a 50, a 50 cent it come out, no? Yeah, 50 cent. Mm. I think so. Yeah, because I didn't make it come out at 50 cent. Them could have make it come out at one dollar if they want. Why did they? Why did they make it come out at 50 cent? Is that psychological no, thing, man? No, no, yeah, what? The thing about, about value, you know? No, ignore, 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 ignore all that premise. Ignore all that premise. You know, it have an overall value, true? Yeah. So, Michael said the overall value is $10. Mm -hmm. So, the value of the company is $10. Watch you now. If you want the stock to be one dollar, what you need to do is increase the number of shares, the outstanding shares, ten to ten, and then you get ten divided by ten, give you one dollar. If it is that you want it, there'll be fifty cent. You increase the outstanding shares to so twenty, so ten divided by twenty, give you fifty cent. Set the outstanding shares. And that can be anything. Them can, them can manipulate that. Them can push it first. Them can take it down. Them do anything they want with it. So at the end of the day, Lance, why you focus not on the one dollar, but on the overall value of the company. That will tell you if it's undervalued or overvalued. Because a lot of them, you know, the dollar went on, dollar come out, and we value the dollar over blue color finance. We've got value dollar two dollar sixty cent. I will put up the valuation for our side. A one dollar it's a sell for. That is undervalued. Even though a one dollar. And, and and value and value is relative because it's all group and a group assumptions. Yeah, but, yeah. but when we assumptions, yeah. Yes. You know, for the assumptions and know whether or not the assumptions are reasonable and they are excessive. All right, what may I say to you, O'Neill now? Yeah. If you put in a stock on the market for general if you glean attention from the general public who are interested yeah. in the stock market during a speculation period, you put the price point at the lowest possible for every man to access the market. Can you do? Yeah, try to accumulate capital from the market. That's the if, with that. Well, um, yes, that, that's the fundamental premise. With Wington, has, has has Wington been a, a feasible investment for the Jamaican public? I was unloading a debt to the public. That's the rational question we need to ask. No, no, before you even move on whether or not the thing is fundamentally <laughs> priced, you know, what I simply I just say is how them come up with the one dollar. Which means them could have, them could have make it anything they want. They must yeah, but, but, they but if they can make anything they want, I don't believe that. I believe that it's just a psychological thing and it's not really going off a pure value alone. That's what I think. I not think saying I, will, I wouldn't participate in these IPO, I, I, I haven't, but I'm just saying that it's more of a psychological thing. Yeah, because, man. Because, because yeah, if you look yeah. at it, if it's like a sleep work already, so why are why you going to fix it? You see two, three companies come out at $1 and then pop off. Why not do the same thing? Why you try to come what, in? What, what, what may I try to get to Ulamo? I'm going to move away from the one. All right. It's a psychological thing. And which company come out at $1 and everybody just start follow? What, which one was it? Um, a Spurge. Spurge. The one before Spurge. Spurge, no. Uh, uh, Ed Focal. No, oh, before Ed Focal. Come out at one dollar too. Well, well, that, 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 that's not really relevant still now. We get where we are still. Yeah, but what I say, I'm going to move up and pass from the $1 now and start so think if the $1, if the company came out at $1, is it overvalued? Is it undervalued? The Jamaican populace yeah. doesn't, listen to me, the Jamaican populace, the general populace don't have the knowledge to actually value a stock. And the problem is this, they see dollar, a dollar will be, I don't know about it, a dollar. Yeah, and that's, that, you know. uh, uh, this is the point. This is, me. this is the reason why I say there's many conflicts of interest in the underwriting process. Because we you put a certain stock on a market, we're very hard for even for, for value. And you put it you put it at 50 cent, one dollar. People generally not they not look on it, you can you can get a lot of raising the capital. So yeah, you're it, right. You're all right. right. Say, as we here know, as people understand the thing. Why we are focused on the one dollar? Each time them come out at one dollar, me look on the overall company and me say, all right, one and one are selfie. Them come out at one point almost one point eight billion dollar, you know, the overall, you know. Yeah. You know that? The I'm overall value that. of the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. And when I look at any focus, any focus are sell for what now? One point five billion dollar. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though Eddie Focal had that massive run up, you know, Eddie Focal came out at one dollar increase. How much? How much percent? One hundred. One hundred eighty percent. Maybe three dollar now. Eddie Focal. Exactly. There about. But what may I say? Even after that run up, you know, one and one, I sell at a higher price than Eddie Focal, you know. Even after Eddie Focal run up so much, you know. So that's simple. Me not even think about the one dollar. One and one to me is fair value. Well, you if you look at it that way, I mean, you can see. That. But uh, the next thing is the basis of allotment with these stocks. Because, I mean, to be honest with you, <laughs> like, you do, we do these basis of allotment and person can get 10,000 rate of stock. I think it's a thing to do with demand <laughs> and supply. Yeah, man, because right. you know that 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 will drive up the price. Because if you can't get the stock, then you have scarcity. Everybody want to grab the stock. Naturally, it's just like, it's like you can't just bet, say, it's like a low rate for the, you're not even have to do nothing. You can't just... <laughs> the thing is, the company in them also don't even really like you, much of them company. Because when you check most of them, I don't, I don't take a thing 15 or 20% of the company. And then yeah. even at that, when them offer it, they, you, you still have reserve pool, maybe I take up all 60 or 70 percent of them up to the general public. Sure, sure, Personally, sure. the only like there are a few benefits when it comes to listing, especially on the junior market. That's why you haven't been seeing much main market stocks because there are more regulations, there are more prerequisites, and the benefits are not as vivid as the junior market. Junior market, just imagine you get 10 percent or 20 percent to your company. And then no, you don't pay tax for the next five years. And then the following five years, you only have to pay half of that. By the time there, you're good, you're gone, gone to wherever you want to go, have a bag of money and something there. So there are other benefits there. So plus you get practically free publicity, which at the end of, end of the day, I'll start equal more revenue to you. Yeah. And if, I personally, I, yeah, continue. Me, me buy art. So my share is always simple. But I normally just buy cran water, D and G, them things there. But because I know say, oh, all right, cran water is what we seem to do. And if my fifth has soda or so, I go buy a bigger instead of a D and G. Because one, I know say, oh, all right, we seem to go on the market. If me buy my one little Angela, I come to feed them billion dollars. So it kind of help the in the company multiple ways. Oh. I just saw me look at it and I just think is that's why they don't really give up much. So they now lose much control, but at the same time, they might get all our good amount of benefits. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Good it's point, a good, good thing point. for the companies. It's a good thing to list because you get more. It's a marketing employer, I think it is. And I mean, they get the tax benefit. So that's an X um, plus also. With regard to you know, you say you buy companies based off how you use them. I don't really do that, but I think that there's something that beginner investors and other persons can do if they like that strategy. Because when I used to do that, I realized it wasn't the most profitable way of investing for me. Because, for example, I go to the supermarket and I look at, for example, say, say we're looking at Greece versus Alaska. It don't make a, I don't see where it make a difference to me if I buy Alaska or Greece. I buy BSA for the volume, me again. And how much I see the price, I see the price can appreciate in value. But everyone to each their own, I guess. I said when I was when I just started investing, you know, I said before I start going and up as and things there. That's how we usually invest because like really I kind of made only person in the family space where I could even start investing in things there. So it was more of a trial and error for me. No. I'm trying to figure out, all right, oh, well, this kind of makes sense, all right. Yeah, I was just see them. I prefer the taste of grace of Alaska. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to choose that instead, you know? So that's how I did look at it back then. But now you can go in and financial, understand. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're, you're smart. Yeah, you know, you're smart. Smart. You're a smart investor. Smart. <laughs> but I agree with you. It's a good way for big, um, investors to, to join, even your kids. Like, it's a way to get your kids to join to begin investing, like you see, they like Disney, or you see, they like uh, a certain product, Supergen. 
you make them buy the products and make them create a portfolio based off of the products they use. So it's a good way to start investing. So don't get what I'm saying. I mean, it's a good way. It's just that something that I think maybe after a while, a person you can look at other ways also. So I think, Rowan, you want to share something? Yes, I'm sharing something. I will tell you guys really. I only really only that I just, I just did this quick while I was speaking. That's only just to discuss my points. So only I have a friend that contacted me, a couple, a Jewish guy, a couple of months ago, right? He didn't want to invest in the one stock or five stock. He wanted to invest in a portfolio that is able to match Warren Buffett or even beat Warren Buffett. So long ago when I was at UE. You know, Mr. Man, I already learned where I love research and anything there. I love this investment thing. So I started thinking, how can you get the same return as a concentrated portfolio but with the least less risk? So what I'm saying, O'Neill, I was I was just like you. But it's as a poor man, we're not gonna really think about them things. But we deal with the institutional fund, I deal with them type of clients, yeah? somebody will ask for them advisor. You have to structure a portfolio now we are aware. It incubant upon the economic climate. And how you structure the portfolio because different portfolio streams get different returns. And you can still structure it to beat the market. So it's actually a simple structure on the bill before while we are speak. Right now, so we have the Vanguard, broad index fund, technology focus. So we have the good old close tools, we have the good old Amazon, Apple, we have the good old some good old company like this, IBM, some like Bank of America too as well. Some some very well developed com- You have the treasury bonds there, so. Who don't have this and hold treasury bonds? You have it both the long term and the short term. You have a lot of money sprinkling like commodities, gold. And this is how we develop still. There is a book with them calling him Tail Hedge Risking. It's very, very complicated, but if you understand it, you're able to clip the portfolio, convexity, so you don't lose much return when the market collapse. So we're going to answer still. We're going to deliver the phone and show you over, over from 2018 to 2022. How the fund would perform? Put a million dollar. We put a million dollar in Rowan Strategic Technology Fund and Berkshire Hathaway. The Strategic Technology Fund beat Berkshire Hathaway by 10%, compounding the $1 million to $2.1 million. And if we can see the risk to reward ratio, but it's an example, me I show you. So over a five year period, four year period, they can compound the wealth by 20%. We're having this concentrated risk. And may even more of this whole, whole structure when we apply fundamental deep value investing to apply to the same structure, something I lose, but I have a better performance on the general market. So that's that many one I show and say, yo, this whole deep domain, only in one stack, you know, work when you're dealing with certain business and certain investors, because nobody can give a billion dollars having wealth fund for the thing type of picking. You understand what I'm saying, O'Neill? Yeah, man, we understand everything we are saying. Here we are saying. When we are talking about being concentrated, we're not talking about doing it for a client. We are talking about personal portfolio. Mm. So with a client, no, you have to do what you have to do. And you can do this with the portfolio. You can do this, you can do this with the personal portfolio. Yeah, because... what, no, what I'm saying is you have more leverage in the personal portfolio to do whatever you want. So when I say highly concentrated, we're not talking about somebody in a blue, um, a white color investor. You can't do that over there, so. Mm. But I know color me talk about a blue color me thing there. So anytime you hear me talk, I see blue color people me talk to. Uh, yeah, I'm get where I'm get where I say. I know the white color something man. White color, me know the white color thing. You have to go down in the detail and uh, I understand it too. I yeah, I don't understand it. Yeah, but know. So, I know that's my personal thing there. Yeah. So I'm me asking to you know O'Neill, even if it's a, a blue color thing, more than do you about such a portfolio for somebody like this and have it automate this run. For so, about 20 years, I can promise you say it will beat the more beat any concentrated portfolio over like the most lucky people like Amazon or, 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 or Apple. I love people that are so lucky. So, like a Warren Buffett say, the low cost index. So, for some white color people, everybody me tell you on the pick stack. Because the people see on the pick stack and then lose. Uh, check your mic, Ron. Um... Yeah, you hear me? All right, so yeah, right. just a context, a just a content, because a content lands a developed content. Now, I could talk about your portfolio. Put it back up, man. I could talk about it for a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, man, but uh, maybe we feel like. Talk about it. Where's the land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go ahead. Sure. Yeah, yeah so 
you know, I don't help me feel like this step, this step me like this step me years and sleepless nights to even understand this. But me I try to show on the right. So, twenty twenty, the market can cut. Where you? Mm. Twenty twenty, me me, me don't me only don't want. We can show it. We can pull up about the data. Yeah. But me only me only me only don't me only don't nine percent man. You don't nine percent. Nine percent. Yeah. Twenty one percent. Yeah. All right. Not no wrong. No, but we're not. This is a short term. This short term still enough. So even though you say you beat Berkshire over a four year period. No, we're not saying like this. But the but this is hold on. We this for a couple of years, like ten years. We don't know what beat I'm not saying this. This the real structure the portfolio. As we tell you, you can do this with individual stock. You can be ten stocks. Yeah, man. Not a problem. But as I say. Is that is a four year? So you say you do it longer. Yeah, man. Do it for fifty you years. Up longer. You have been beating Berkshire from how long now? This I be this I be Berkshire. The structure how we develop it, how you structure it. You can it will be Berkshire from way back like two thousand. I tell you, twenty years. Not wrong. Not wrong. So how much I ex? Well, how much I explain to you now? The geometrical tree in the portfolio is called the convergence of the tree. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yo, it's, it's so muffled now, man. Yeah, it's so muffled. You see me? You see me? Yeah, muffled. Yeah, I want to the mic. Maybe the mic itself. Can you just it talk about the mic? Hmm? I didn't just plug it out or something like that. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, it's the sound. Come back, you know. When you're yeah. talking just now. All right, so now hear him properly, right? Yeah, yeah, You're hearing yeah, good now. Yeah. Hey, Milan, no, no, You're hearing good now. So no, my problem is no. Nah. All right. Oh, you're not here. No, we're not here, no. I'm not, uh, it's my talk, man, but like, you know, but... Well, but at the end of the day, God, he might have a portfolio that can jump in for it because the man never do it over the years. He needs so, for, me for like, an email um, Warren Buffett I can just think of a billion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that vibe. See, because I'm not necessarily familiar with the US market to that. So maybe I might say into the companies them when I'm in Can I hear me now? Yeah. 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 All right, so what may I say now? Yeah, this is the whole thing now. Sorry about that. So on better. What may I say to you now, um, O'Neill? We have people, you have people over the years where them can't pick stock. And yeah, them, yeah. yeah, you get what I mean? I say is, and then them want better return on the market, risk, risk adjusted returns on the market. You get what I mean? I say? Yeah, so yeah. this, this is where the youth them from Harvard and Stanford are doing. The man use machine learning to systemize this and a, a give you a better return. So I'm not, not complicate the thing, but I find it's very invaluable. The concentrated we are go, going doing it like a, as I say, a poor man thing. But a poor man have to have knowledge too. Know for value stock, understand industries and business models, strategic advantages, understand in the future and discounting it back. This is very complex. I'm gonna recommend any or anybody to even try to do that. But concentrated. The concentrated way, as Warren Buffett says, right. Warren Buffett said the same thing as well. All right, you yeah, Warren Buffett yeah, also said. Warren Buffett said diversification is a protection against, against, against ignorance, mm. but that doesn't mean that diversification is wrong. It just means that if you're a less knowledgeable investor, a beginner, nothing yeah. is wrong with buying into index funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, yeah, or, a, or a portfolio like yours. I, at that, me I say, Lance, me not advocate for the whole concentration for everybody. Yeah. I don't understand. That me I get so, to. So, for new investors, nothing is wrong with going into index funds or using unit trust. Exactly. But as your skill develop as an investor, now you can try to be more concentrated. strategic. You know, I'm more concentrated if you want. Yeah, so, 
to each their own. And I think all of us have a, a very good point right here. Very yeah, good. man, I agree with only a hundred percent. Everything only is me only the same camp. So there is, yeah, there is, yeah, yeah. I feel like when me offer him still, when me I try to show is this, uh, there's a better you can go like a research ways how to do this thing differently still. It's me than a concentrated way as well. That's um. All right, let me show your point. Come understand everything you are saying. My have, have a friend who work in one of them white color. What are them finance? Oh, 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 yeah, street man. Yes, I don't know the white color. Uh, blue color, I think the blue color finance YouTube. <laughs> no. White color. Him control a portfolio in one of them local financial institutions. Yeah. So one day, him knock me up and say, Yo, me beat the market, you know. Fame portfolio has been beating the market for some time, about three years. Seen? So me, I say, All right, you beat the market. Jamaica up. JSE up about 30%, him up about 31%, 35% thereabout. That's when JSE are going good from 2015. I come up. I mm -hmm. asked him a simple question What make you bait the market? He can't answer. And that's also, the thing with a lot of them. You have diversify and you do a lot of things. But if you can't break out the diversification strategy, you might, you might have beat the market and, and you have beat the market. And the market, a beta, them call it, and an alpha. Exactly. No, y'all talk to me. I don't want to use the fancy terms of time. I know them. Yeah. I'm going to talk it normal. Yeah. You have the stock picking option of the market, you know. Well, mm. yeah. The, the return, like, when this is what I can do. The entire return where the, where you, where the portfolio make, we can break it down into, say, market return. This is just for investing in the market, and you don't do nothing. And you make this. Stock picking return. This is for you. I pick the stock them differently. That's called alpha. Those return different, you know. Mm. And you have the, the, they say rotation return where they rotate the different um, industry. You can break out that, you know. They and fuck that. Exactly. I make 10% because I move from finance to manufacturing. I make 5% because I pick A stock different from B stock. Then I know these things. No, yeah, no, that's no. that's that's the problem, you know, with diversification. <laughs> hey, it's, that's what I actually explained to you a while ago. A lot of persons are diversifying, but they're not understanding what they have diversifying against a whole diversification work. Because bonds operate different for equities. True. As we tell you, you can do as we tell you the portfolio, I'm sure you they call yeah, it yeah, yeah. layer, I'm call it layering alpha and to betas. You know what I talk. Yeah, so your structure, for the, it, your structure for the market return and you layer the sweet point and like what you say, you know, you pick your dollar, you pick your that, you pick your that, and you have a very good structure return. Yeah, and this is... We know what thing is nice, you know. Like all you are doing, you are NGI, because you know exactly what it is that you Exactly. Doing. So exactly. When, when we realize now, O'Neill, we can use a bit of machine learning and then when we do the machine learning and jar off it up and find a good quality business then, we just dig the okay. financial for five years. And we lay out that palm data. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with that, man. Yeah, and, and this is where you can scale to a 30 billion dollar. That's an example, yeah, exactly. actually. Yeah. So I get what you are saying. Yeah, so. Yeah. But it's a lot of complication. Yeah. And the, and the mud on the street, the normal person, they not have a clue. So, you know And I mean? it, it really, it really, and it also hard for them even go to go pick stock. Because enough people have come and say, yo, buy this, or buy that, buy this, or buy that. Yo, so people, people from the local market, me hear people are say stock easy or whatever. Yo, it ain't easy. Cause like them not get the, the downside for the most part, so them not get them not get the hit yet. But no say oh, it ain't boy. easy man. And the thing is, you know, as I'm I say, a man might I right, say you invest in a, the IPO come out to invest. IPO go up to two hundred percent. You triple your money. You know I say you make it. I know you make it. Mm -hmm. you, just, you get me? <laughs> so, then I know when I then make the money as against just the market, make it because you're in the market. Yeah. So, you that's see, why they say it's easy. I know nothing easy around your daddy. You and see how. Not scratch the surface like it. You see how Grant, you see how Grant invests? I saw the normal investors for invest. You see, if you work in a one party shop, and you work, at, you work at Grace Kennedy, you're and you understand the seasonality, you understand the financial statement, you know, if you read a balance sheet. And you don't see too much debt, and you know you see the revenue are grow, you just buy a stock. Yes, okay. You know the business, you understand, you know it. I see it in front of you. Which is in front of you. That, that, that in itself, 
as a retail investors we invest you know, for yeah, you know i agree with that though. i agree if they understand the business they do that but if they don't understand the business they, they, i don't i don't agree because you know you have two risks now you have the career risk and the investment risk also so if the party shop should crash you probably crash you, i don't know if you disagree with me or yeah, man, where are the right now lands but yeah why so when they the party shop the new if it not perform good enough exactly so oh, you get out the lands so when them fire a man today because not now go you see it i don't know why i say your business also acting up when it, when the crowd come and buy the party, you know you see it in, your, in front of your eyes. You did it. Yeah, yeah. Funny enough. Yeah, funny enough. yeah research. But at the same time, time being there. if the party now sell good and you see we have some problems in with management, you can also not buy the stock. You, you yeah, you're not gonna buy it. It's a yeah, free, yeah, yeah. it's a two-way street. Yeah, you're not gonna buy it, Lance. Yeah, yeah. What we are trying to say is a part of research, you know. Yeah. It's a part of research where you're, you're working on a business, you go up on the highway, you buy Trans Jamaica. You see yeah. me? You got a barber shop around and say, T Bone, the barber shop, you're up on the stock market. You know, T Bone cut your good. You know, the man always full up. You yeah, buy yeah, the stock. Yeah. And you just want to read the balance sheet. You don't have to know discount the cash flow or nothing. Read the balance sheet to the debt with them have and see how the revenue are grow. That's all. Yeah, man, it's, know, a big part, it's a big part of research, but we, I think we neglect. Yeah. yeah. When the man, when yeah. the man, the talent, the spirit tree. The spiritual IPO where they dropped the other day. Um, somebody will work, them the work there, but they work all right. So they work where spiritual buys their papers. And you know, um, how they make them sauce and everything. Come up buy them pepper and them garlic and this and that from a specific place, and then now them ship it up and do whatever the manufacturing. A guy say like Someone I know him say, Oh, he might put in like all a million night just cause him know the business. He might say, Oh, for regular stock, him now invest in an IPO, but because him know, say, Oh, yeah, all yeah. right, I work as per tree, I work, I work where I want to spur suppliers, them and then them hear talks of yo, they want to go expand for facilitate them demand and them stuff there. You know, say, I'm more money that. I come for two for them company and more money in turn about the spirit tree. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I agree with that. Well. that is. Because if, before even when me just start invest, I always just look around and I say, no, oh, who won this? Or I who won that? Like not knowing, you know, not knowing say oh like stock market and everything. I just I wonder who won this. Like go about the plaza and I say, oh, you know, appearance and parent and them something there. But then Y'all go workplace like all uh, you go halfway train, you see this big 58 building. I are you work at cars and then you go Alarica. I say, I want a building here. I wonder if they're my parent. And then you go so bam. Yeah, I mean say oh, I stand the motor own the complex there and then my parent Alarica. I uh, want this, who want that. So yeah, that's yeah. how I looked at it growing up. Yeah. I still use it, but because now I have a bit more knowledge and certain stuff, you know. Right. Yeah, take an extra layer step. But yeah, and then I think when I remember when I talked earlier about a stock value at one dollar, it one is not just psychology alone, it also offers more liquidity in the market because I'm sure we know about palisaders, but for them stock is like fifteen hundred dollar per share, they don't really get much trading value. Matter of fact, um the company name. Fast switch, fast switch the other day did a stock split, and since them them stock split them them volume start more volume start trading, so like yeah look up to the stock split you know like maybe one hundred thousand or one three hundred thousand, and then after the stock split I did a one to ten, after the stock split now them start to some millions of volumes and them something here so more persons tend to say oh you know say oh. It's cheaper, so I buy it, which in term is not necessarily cheaper, it's just price at a lower price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, we're gonna take a few questions. So I, I see you here where uh first question is from let me see Steph Stefan Flowers. She said, I hear people call Jamaican market a pre-market. What does this mean? Pre-market. It's a pre-market? Yes. Uh, 
understand. Yeah. Yeah. You guys understand what the... I don't understand. Could she elaborate? Stefan, could you elaborate a bit? But yeah, the term still. But I think the term just means the market is not developed. The market is not well developed before, oh. you know what I mean? Maturity. Yeah, yes. Maybe, maybe that's what she's uh, doing. I, re I really does something that I come from. But I never hear the term. Pre market. Pre market. I want a market when there's some trading before the market's really open or something like that. You know, I have nothing to do with. You don't development have as structure. Oh, oh yeah, you have all the trade after market. Oh, you thought uh, before market, pre-market okay. movements okay. and anything that's oh, okay, okay. all. No, no, for the structural and the market. So I don't understand what she asks. Unless she means that all right. So you know you have um you have JM B with them of them own platform where they work on. So you can like look at the stocks and order buy stocks at that time and name something there. You have J Trader that. Essentially, it's the same thing, but I think you maybe participate closer to the market, room, which is like 9.30. But most persons would probably already put in them trade because me now go dead here in a day. My, my work go. So I'm just go up and put in the information, time one by Grace Kennedy at, at $100 and then done. Unless that's what she means by pre market, being that all I trade them already have my already and I just JC, we just have. Facilitate the trades of the stocks and a buy and a sell for the person. All right. Well, I guess that's what she, that's where she's coming from. So um, I'm going to answer the next question. Cheap monk financials. What are the three main criteria a normal investor can use to pick a good stock? Go on, blue color. <laughs> Well, you know, blue color don't really broke down things in them structure there, you know, like, you know my style. At the end of the day, yes, you, repeat. Me I say, you don't have to know the stuff. You don't have to know the company inside out. To understand the business, that's why. understand the business. Yeah. And getting it at the right price because investment is a business, you know, business, you know. So yeah. if it is, you want to make some money, saying the stock is valued at $10, the stock worth $10. Buying it at $10 don't mean nothing. You're not going to make no money there, sir. So you don't want to buy it at a discount. I watch it rise go up to the, the real price. So you understand the value different from the price. Is that total? You understand the yeah. So there is value and there is price. Price yeah. are the something where you see every day. Value are the research. I understand the business. I know. So yo, you get me? So, so if so, you are look for yeah, sorry, go on, go on. No, man, you, you can go on. Most the tree still. Man, I said you don't need not more than that. I All understand right. the business and getting it at, at a cheaper price than it is really worth. You're good. So the first right. thing what you want to do is you, mean you want assets management. So you look, your assets management, you want to look on return and invested capital. How has the invest, return and invested capital over the last five years? Has it yeah. been beating the market? Uh, um, treasury bond. So you, your assets against the treasury bond return. Um, how much has the manager, $1 um, leading return, um, return equity? How, how much? Um, market cap has that created in the last five years, right? last two years. Um, it's a for those assets and manager, and you want assets return on equity and ass return on assets. All them structure and manage them, they, 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 um, use efficiency of the company. The, but outside the company, you, know, you want the company strategic advantage. So understanding the company, external forces now. So you look at strategic position of the place, what kind of business model they have, and the last and final and most important thing, the valuation we have here for the business. That's yeah. I was think that if you look at them simple things there, you, you you can find really really good stocks. Right. So um everybody have their own method of um valuing a stock or such. Um the very first book that I read, matter of fact, I think I'm right here. So yeah, the very first book I read was um you probably not gonna see seven secrets to invest. Investment. Yeah, seven secrets to invest um like warren buffett basically and the three top parts are the three main ideas among it as i did say is circular competence circular competence um then broken up into several ways but to just get a short summary i did a summary on it on my channel as well so you can probably say that i did it way back but circular competence just mean where you are and the things you understand in the things you are because all right I know finance, that's why I'm kind of the 
the banking sector and name something there. But then suppose there's a fishing company. I don't know how to fish. I don't even know how to get on a boat while they're in the water. So there's no sense. So are you actually trying to um, invest in a company? I don't know because that's how they get robbed. But then you can also learn. So that's one part of it. Um, economic moat uh, is also a concept where what are the advantages the company that you're investing in has? So everybody knows JPS. JPS uh, is literally probably just one of the, the, the only person that facilitate light in Jamaica. So if that is a company that you'd like to invest in, you don't really have much outside other options to invest other than JPS. They have a barrier to entry, which is the contract with the government. Nobody can really come in, go set up a pool and then something and start the light, be landing something there. They have economy and scale, they're buying a large volume, so they get cheaper discount uh, uh, or so on. All right, I want to break it down because to me, I have 10 steps that I look at for each company. But for that person, that's a tree. So I just want us to do a quick recap. Which three factors do you guys look at? Which three factors? All so, right. So for me, one, understanding the business. Yeah. Two, understanding their advantage. And three, the valuation. So basically, I think that it could be broken down into that. I what do you agree right here? Yeah, man. Blue color. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> everything about them to some extent yeah man so but, but i don't think tree i really think tree is very sharp because some companies are more complex than just tree but if the three main things that you're going to look for those would be the three thing if only three things you're looking out for so the uh, next question i'm going to go to uh stefan close again what are the factors that cause the stock price to fly and can this be predicted uh, <laughs> what does that cause stock price to fly all right so it's the main a, factor that drive stock price is stock price in general yeah, that, that's a thing because i've seen i've seen companies that literally been losing money and then one year they make money Stock price, them stock price. Right. Earnings. Er, yeah, earning is one. Earnings is the underpin of the stock market. Um, a beat earnings um share, and that's all. That's all the people in focus upon. Because it's algorithms. Uh, uh, well, speaking about Jamaica, well, earnings. And uh, in over overseas market, you have algorithms that flag earnings. So once you beat earnings, stock arm um, normally go up two percent, three percent institutional um buyers also so our next thing with stocks to depend i mean institutional buyers can contribute these are like the big players in the market so some companies will say like an institution known as institutions own 60 percent of a whole company so i guess that's another factor also and then what yeah. next the speculation speculation that's an next thing also. which which we think is driving the jamaican market <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's a Jamaican market. Oh, and Lance, you have people like me and you will claim so we are YouTubers, you know. Not even. Yeah. People start follow follow YouTubers and lots, you know, because I have some people with them talking about the stock price move. Be a just the talking. Yeah, yeah. And information will go out to the market. So, and that is the reason why Blue Color Finance was formed in the first place. We are trying to bring some objectivity to the game. Yeah, so the yeah. Blue color finance, we are valid the stock, then we are show your figures, we are show your assumption. It's not just about talking. You get me? Yeah, yeah. I, it, what, what I try to do is educate uh, the persons, and that's what um, one of my objectives with this channel. And all I gotta say is this <laughs> like when I tell them, tell, tell you this last about last year, I tell them, say, yo. Watch out for the Australian market. Man, land, it's my post. It's the Australian real estate, real estate market. Over yeah. there, no. Is it a sink now? I want to me have to tell them people like Jamaica say them should be happy that see the underwriters they are working alongside them for the fees because if it wasn't for that, most people would not join already with them stuck and valuation of what they're jumping at. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. You think sharting gonna be a thing for the market? There, there was an announcement that there would be sharting for the market soon. What do you think that yeah, we can't general? wait. Um for those who are new or new invest sharting is when you you basically yeah. purchase the stock. At a, you, you, you purchase the stock at a, at a lower price. So I want to find the right word because I don't want to. I'm, I'm going to try to explain it to you, Lance. Try the right word. Lance. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, talk. Go ahead. So you have a stock and you hold it for the long term. So you, you buy NCB. You, you, so you have NCB and you hold it for the long term. Maybe uh-huh. you holding NCB for the long term means that you think NCB price will go up. Me, on the other hand, believe the NCB price are going to drop because the company is good. So what me do now, Lance? I have a short NCB. Oh, boy. So, so me come, come to you. For the long term. You buy NCB. You get a feedback. You hold an NCB for the long term. You hold an NCB for you think NCB price will go up. Me, on the other hand, believe the NCB price are going to drop. You have a feedback, Lance. So what me do now, Lance? You have a short NCB. Yeah, yeah. So me come to you. Lance, I play, I play the live stream. Yeah, yeah. You're mute. Yeah, man, blue color, go on, tell the whole shot selling the boss. Yeah, so as my say, so what would I do now? For me, I said the stock I got drop off in a door. Come by. I got to, go to Lance. I'm going to say, lend me a stock. Remember, Lance want only for the long term. You know? So him just lend me the stock. So me now have the NCB. Yeah, man, blue color, go on, tell the whole selling the boss. <laughs> It's still a playbook. Lance, mute, mute the stream, man. Alright, go on top, look. Yes, right. I'm going to borrow the stock. I'm going to borrow it from Lance. I want me to know. I'm going to sell it in the market. You get me? So I'm going to say NCB for the $10 there. So I'm going to borrow a $10 stock from Lance. NCB share. I'm going to sell it for $10 in the market. And when it drop in the price now, I'm going to go back into the market and I'm going to buy it at the lower price. Let's say it dropped to $5. Go back into the market and I'm going to buy it for $5. And I'm going to give back Lance. I'm going to give back Lance in one share when I take from him. I'm pocket the profit. I'm pocket the profit, which is a $5 profit. Mm. And but the risk now is what I'm called a short squeeze. So here what? When I take it from Lance, see? I'm going to sell it for $10. I'm going to see what I'm going to and you know, yeah, I start buying <laughs> NCB stock and the stock start go up. Me now, if I go back into the market, go buy it for give up land some stock, you know. So if it go to $20, I have to go buy it at $20 now. Remember, at $10, I'm going to sell it for you. At $10, I'm going to have. So I have to go find an extra $10 to purchase it and give up land some stock. And that's at the risk, you know, because NCB can go up to any amount, any levels in terms of numbers. Because of madness. And the more me lose. Yeah, so you know, general is short and stuck on the riskiest thing because the market yes, can't yes, remain, yes. the market can't remain very mad until you even sober. So it don't really make sense, my brother. Game stock. Skills. Game stock. Stock. Let's see if I put some headphones over them on. Tesla, the same thing. What yeah. is this to Bill, Bill Hackman. You see them? Yeah. To, but, but, yeah. So, so my problem now, you know, the Jamaica market is very illiquid, you know, daddy. Me not know how it's going to work out here, you know. Me not, me not even know if it can work. Alexa, 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 me can't put a million dollars on me and share in TV and me can't come and say, yo, me put some put options. I get a million dollars at any time. And then me can't come back up my hedge with, with some options then. Me can't do that. Not, not me can't not count up for hedge. <laughs> so. Yeah, you understand, so. so me not know. It, it, it not make sense to me right now. You know, they develop for that. More, no, I think because Jamaica is not so advanced as it would barely just start going as stock market. So introducing shards, 
primarily probably just going to be focused um, for like institutional investors. And then at that point, the, the researchers diligently for actually get um, the information. I'm saying, all right, we don't believe say oh, this stock going to be at this price for too long. We can short it. But it's an idea. But idea, well, I think they probably just uh, oh, oh, overestimate what um, the Jamaican market is capable of as a right now. I'm not so, underestimated either. Yeah, they, they, they know that, yeah, the market been going up, 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 the IPO, I push up the price, make movements, them seem, oh, like we're making a lot of progress. But I really just supply and demand really a push for a market right now, even though we literally in the midst of a possible recession. So, yeah, I'm going to think sure thing right now, I'll go work. I think JC might just put it up as a banner, but then when they implement it or try it, it did not really make much sense. God, I'm going to say this to you. But the Jamaica Stock Exchange course from about 2014, you know. And that was a, it was a discussion we had in the class because it has always been something where they want doing and not just now, you know. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. But one of the things is the risk that comes with it. That was one of the things where they know what really want to implement it because they must say it's really risky. And then when we talk about the liquidity of the market, the liquidity you now they have to facilitate it. So them hold it off for a long time. They might hold it off. So I don't know if them believe say yo. 100 stocks are trade for the stock exchange now. And a lot of people are more aware of the stock market. Remember, Wickton come out and them talk about the amount of paper was start investing in the stock market due to Wickton. And as these new IPO come, you have more new investors coming into the market. So I'm not think, I don't know if I that them are saying, say, yo, maybe, you know what I mean? I think, I, I think like, you see, when you have short selling and you don't have, you don't have a proper liquidity and microstructure, like yeah. liquidity providers, it can cause a whole heap of breakers to fly. You see what I say? So, a man like me want to shout out the Jamaican bonds them. So, I want them to go to bonds too. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why you don't want to shout them. <laughs> so, um, that's a that's a pretty good explanation. The shouting. I'm a, I was having some technical issues, so <laughs> I really really could. But, but that's a pretty good explanation. And I want to do a video on it sometime in the near future. But yeah, yeah. I'm going to take on a next question. Um, uh, personal asking. Chipmunt Financials, how do you rate dividend investments opposed to growth investment? So um, for me, it's not really a straight line like that. For, for most dividend companies, they tend to be more mature companies that are, you know, there, there is a certain point in the business where they can start to pay out more cash. But yeah, most times, it's, they don't grow as fast. But that's not for every company because you have some companies that are paying dividend and they're going to a fast rate. So when I did my video last year on the dividend stocks, Barita was one of the companies that was on my list, but Barita was also one of the fastest growing companies. But this Barita was an exception. So, in general, growth companies tend to don't pay dividends. So, if we're going to look at the US market, I'm going to look at companies like Meta, Google, Amazon. Those companies tend to don't pay a dividend because they're reinvesting back the, the capital back into the business. But if you look at a Coca-Cola now, or a Procter, or another blue chip company, they tend to pay dividend because you know they reach at a mature stage. So if you want to find get dividend companies, you have to look more for mature companies. So what do you guys, um, all you guys agree, or you have a point you can add on this? All right, Mama, some my piece. Um, dividend, dividend investment, I really believe that still. Number one, when I look at the local market, seeing local market split into two um, markets, you have the junior market, the, the main market. Well, if the main market companies are mature companies, pay a dividend, I don't have a problem with that. But with a junior market company, pay a dividend. I think that's a problem. I think them just a waste money. 
See, I'm going to explain why I said that. That's why I said, company that needs to grow need to harness their, 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 their resources and grow the business. One of the problem is when you pay the dividends, seeing dividends coming to us as shareholders, government take a slice of the cake, you know. I think the government takes some 15% of dividends. Yeah, yeah, they think. Seeing, and one of the things why most companies invest on the Jamaica, on the junior market, that is. They want to grow. To, is to avoid the taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so why now you invest to avoid taxes and turn around? I give you get me? A subject of the taxes again. So what would I say? And, and it's a very easy way now. Keep the money, grow the business, Make the capital, give us capital gain then. So when the stock price go up, who want take dividends? Sell whatever portion that is equal to the dividends where you want and take out your money. And in that way, you're not paying a tax again too because capital gain is not tax on the local market. So pay us in terms of capital gain. Who want take dividends? Take dividends. I mean, take the capital gain without having to be subjected to the taxes. And everybody I, good. I miss you something too. I, 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 all right, answer, Ron. Answer for him. I have some man on the stock market where, where when you see them offer dividend on the junior market, you have to be very skeptical because dividend stock in Jamaica is a very direct correlation between dividend and stock price rise. When yeah. you hear stocks in the market with dividend, stock yeah. price rise. I have some manager, some senior manager who are running the company. Most of the share with them have in the company, you know, an offshore holding company. So that capital gains are for them benefit. So, is it as well only let's say is it is it actually beneficial to return the capital to investors are compounded like how amazon has compounded its wealth within earnings and you have to you have to answer that question for yourself it's subjective but i will if i give my plane at a game yeah well if i give all right lance being as made up on your channel let me drop a bomb for you seeing mail pack may i look on mail pack um from about 2018, 2019, I come up. May I watch, analyze them balance sheet and may I look on it. If I look on mail pack balance sheet, they have what they call um, related party investors. You ever see yeah. balance sheet with related parties on it? How is company have it again, sir? Most of all, them have related parties, man. You have to be careful. The related parties, when it's a related parties on a balance sheet, the skeptical. Because them can take where shareholders value and, 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 and sink it off over related party. So related party meaning somebody in the company own the company where them are the business with. See? Yeah, yeah. All right. So mail pack has related party on the balance sheet. Now when you look at the notes, it has uh, express fitness, you know. Are one of the related party. You know, so mail pack management own yeah. express fitness. And them have a water truck company, I think I know the dam rep, I think. You know, some mail pack actually lend money to those two companies at no interest rate. Exactly. And at no <laughs> time to repay the debt. But, but that would have been disclosed in the statements of financial statements. If it is in it. But if you're not reading it, you can't see it. They're not going to know the average investor. Nah, no. that, that so so they have... Someone me look at it. Watch me now. Me look at it. I say, yo, I want to go on your stuff. So it's like them are. Uh, and that is the reason why if I, if I go on my channel and listen to my review on Mail Pack, Mail Pack was selling at $3 something. I said, yo, my value is weird on a $2 something. It they right there when the value it now. So I watch it, see? But what I said, it's almost like them want money to fund them other business. Yeah. They are more yeah. interested in the other business because yeah. more growth the over there. So they must and... like pull the money out. And, and, and what we realize now, very early, you see them pay a big dividends. Since I want to check the dividends and the amount, the amount that the manager would have get is the same amount that hear them invest in the express catering early after the, the dividend payment. So money, money, he want to put over there. But remember, you know, if yeah. Mailpack was if Mailpack wasn't a public company, you know, he could have he could have just. Move the money and then feel, please. O'Neill, yeah. this, this, this have investigation from Dollar Financial now too. And you will see me matter about. I saw them at upper rate. What go on? What go on about? No, but nah, but nah, say, me, me can't say, but if you understand how the architecture of how Jamaican, these um, CEOs and, and, and managers are operating, 
as I say, related parties, the, it, normally this closure don't come under the AS 18 and the financial statement, right? But yeah. the problem is the average man don't know. And the average man don't know, say, a holding company, the manager used to own the equity. And when there is a certain dividend payout, you have a question, is it mutual, if you grow, is it about the business or the benefit managers? Yeah, man. So yeah, as me as I say, you have to know yeah, the, when you are investor in the Jamaica market. Just, you know, yeah, no. but, you have a company, um, probably top um, dividend paying company right now, which is Carriers. Carriers, like, I don't see, um, they make a lot of money. I would not, would not go around that. They make a lot of money. But at the same time, they still pay out a lot of dividends. And the stock price not really move to that significantly. I guess maybe over the past two years, it maybe be like 33% or 37%. But mm-hmm. like when them unknown, it's, it's like something so constant now, it's like it don't even make any move in the stock prices. But although I am all in, um, dividend, um, I, I think them probably could have just invest the money in somewhere else. See them have cannabis company coming out and them some there. Them have them AMG September, September 9th. I'm going probably just have to ask them, you know, what go on? Why I'm just like give you the money so when they can invest in, in a different companies and grow. So yeah. I, don't, I, don't think, I don't I don't remember seeing related parties on their stuff. But I guess because you know have nothing to do with the money, and you just have to make it like you reach a level, you just decide, you know, I just continue to pay to keep the interest because them don't miss a payment. You know? like, them don't miss a payment. Carriers are cash cow. From, from mm-hmm. ever since car- carriers have paid big dividends, I don't think I'm going to stop anytime soon. But why well, you say the stock price now is responsible? Carriers have fundamental problems around here. You know? Remember the illegal cigarette something? It's a big yeah. business. Mm-hmm. And it's a quiz, I'm sure. You get me? Yeah, yeah. Business. Business. I think the last one go on, they will just put them up the money every day. Lee. Why not? Investing in it, I'll do it. See, the thing about why I think some things we're not going to be able to change as investors. So, if you feel like if you feel like career is not using your money right, they get a sell the stock and I mean, look for a better uh-huh. option. But they are dividend investors. In the, in the land, 10, yeah. um, 10%. <laughs> no, if you're a dividend investor, <laughs> yes, but if you want to say growth. You have to look for our younger company and 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 look at the new products and services they are bringing to the market the innovation the strategy the strategies all of those things so there is nothing wrong with before you cut it out it's if a company that grow marginally if you see a warm buffet structure and dealing and we go in and take preferred equity at nine percent or six percent with an option exercisable for growth in the company in the future so there's nothing wrong with if you manage big money you have money you can't do you can you can't do actually do dividends you can't do certain structure yeah, to make a profit in the long run yeah come down to how much money i'm magic i don't know if you them rich were acts <laughs> everybody's gonna put a hundred mil so good there, good there. and so when you talk about we want to go back on meal packing up the, the business then with meal pack now are they subsidiaries are just related interests that, that can't oh, cause man, are, they, are, they, are they management them have interest in them over there well it's a conflict of interest that brother <laughs> hmm. Because there's been a big case, if you look, if you're judiciary wise, if you look on business case precedents, you realize that there's a whole um, legal, legal um, um, thing happen, matters that happen thing when you have um, related party transactions in a certain way, because yeah, someone can be legal. Yeah, man. But for we understand the, the, the thing, we can look into it and go on. But the thing with Jamaica, which me not like, you know, is a hush hush run here, you know. Yeah. Exactly. I have yeah, a key yeah. for you. I said to Kai Kai. Even people on YouTube, even people on YouTube, them coming on and them are hush hush to. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm free, the weapon, yo. Because I'm free, because I'm free, the weapon is against them. So again, you have to be careful. Oh, careful. I want me to watch, when me watch the, 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 the thing them for the, for the, the Bloomberg, the man that does talk with them, see. And the market just nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> Uh, two yeah, different kettle of fishes. Uh, <laughs> why for the fish still? But yeah, we get what you have to say. <laughs> Yo, me, 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 even, even the, the stock exchange itself, too. The standard what them set in terms of disclosure, work. Too much information I do on You ever look on the quarterlism? No information in the quarterlism. 
barely, man, them just say, right, financials. Are I, I don't know. To be honest, That's one of the reasons why I am investing more in the US market now, because it's so easy to research companies like. Exactly. It's way more easy. Information is out there. And all right, watch a pre. I didn't even step out information out there. I'm going to make you guys know something. See, you see. The financial institutions, they have to pay for certain information from Jamaica Stock Exchange. Remember, Jamaica Stock Exchange is a listed company as well. So that means that they need to make them money, they need to make for them growth, they need to make for them margins and them something there. So if you check money even JSC you now, the updated website, you only get like two years worth of information like on the home screen. And then you'll get the financials box. You know, the summary of them that gave them only like two years. Price history you only get um, 12 months if you to sign up. And then there's other information where you literally have to pay for to get. So at the same time, it's a conflict of interest for say, oh, all right, we can go in for free, but we need to make revenue some way, shape, or form. So we're going to go into some and not pay for the extra. Because the average person now go, want all of the information anyways but the person actually who are gonna need it you can't get it unless they're gonna pay for it yeah true uh, i'm gonna take our next question um thanks for all the responses um imran borel just asked do you think jamaica have any recession proof stock um recession proof stock yeah man Yo, well in terms of Research recession proof business, I would say yes, but in terms of the market, NCB now nah gone away, even because NCB are almost the infrastructure. Grace Kennedy now, nah them, them, have, nah no no them, them, them are rocks to one, you know. Yeah, those are business that you would say all, all forever type of business, all forever because. And you're looking at the balance sheet as well. The companies fail, and it's the system fail. The system after if if the system if NCB fail, that would mean that the system fail because NCB can uh, control 30, 30, 30 plus percent of the whole entire market. So if an institution like that fail, there's big implications. So and how much? How much percentage uh, NCB represent a very high percentage of Jamaica per GDP per if you look at GDP structure and NCB market capitalization control a very huge proportion of the market cap of Jamaica. You understand what I mean? Yeah. It'll be a systematic issue. But yeah. when it comes to understanding research and proof stocks, you have to look at fortress balance sheet. You want balance sheet to look at cash, how we can cushion and withstand. I think Wisinko is one company because Wisinko is a company that are rich in cash. To me, that's a recession proof stock. So I have to so so far, Grace, NCB, Wisinko, who is on your at your list? Which other company could say no? Sajikor. Sajikor is a is a is a, is a what about Sajikor? Oh, I mean I know about Sajikor now. That's what I know, but you make the distinction between a stock and company. I mean, I don't know how to change. All right, I want to differentiate. All no, right. You, 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 so, you all right, I want to differentiate. The distinction between the two. So, all right. It's a recession proof stock. So, I don't think there's no recession proof stock, but I think there are recession proof businesses Business. that are in the stock exchange. So, that's how I would phrase the question because some companies, if they fail, might as well. You pack up and go home. Yeah, <laughs> but is it, but I understand still why you have to differentiate because stock is a fractional ownership in our business. No, but remember, say the stock market is driven is driven by speculation yeah. also. Oh, 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 I'm getting and market oh, sentiment. Yeah. Same so if a recession stock. should happen right now, you know, say you know that stocks can just plunge immediately. You know the company still have performed good, and the company still is there in, uh, and is in good operation. So there's a difference. So I don't NCB think there's stock in a stock. NCB stock has come from $200, $90 reach now. I'm glad because I'm going to load up on it. <laughs> yeah, so I understand what you are saying because you are saying the company is good, so keep buying it. Yeah, but Mr. Market. Yeah, you know Mr. Market. Opportunity. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Market. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Market. Yeah, Mr. Market. Yeah, Mr. Market. Yeah, Mr. Market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And knowing the dichotomy between a business and a stock price is one of the fundamental factors to invest in, you know? It's called Mr. Stop market, you know, uh, like we want to call Eh? And the only way you can see when opportunities come. Mm. So it makes right. a lot of sense. 
So, um, um, NCB or NCB yeah. or PV sharp or seven point, seven point something. So, it's from from the PE or you said of all the way, it is a good company. Like one yeah. of the low ends, I think the closest to it is what JMB, but maybe like point zero something, um, lower than it. But overall, they are good companies. I just, I guess, maybe the market, not necessarily focusing on the NCBs, because them numbers big as price. And then, because your big investors probably see say that go down, go down, they probably try to upload and just kind of just report. Oh man, hey, right now, I'm telling them about this. You see, if you want, if, if you plan to invest for the next year, and every month you get your pay for the next, for the next eight to 10 months, just load up on NCB. Just don't watch other stuff. Just buy oh, NCB. Right. Buy NCB. So We're not like giving any financial advice. Right. Right. We're not giving any <laughs> advice over here. But you know, <laughs> we're not telling no one to buy NCB stock. We're not financial. Well, I don't know if Garta licensed no, financial advice. No, 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 But research analyst. But these are just opinion. Oh, yeah, oh. personal opinion. Buy NCB. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. And the thing too, I'm mean, gonna like about the Jamaica market too, you know. As I mean, so we always see a lot of uh, um, programs out there, and no one now uh, said just like my God said, so well, like, if I feel like you're buy NCB, why not sell it? Why you afraid of? You get me? If I feel like you're sell NCB, why not sell it? Why you afraid of? But Lance, Lance, suppose it's put up say your demand. Uh, what is because of opinions, you exactly. know? So opinion it just set away when, when yeah so that's all is talk talk yeah once say, yo i love this now buy this and i buy that that wow yo listen to me if you find a bank that's selling um eight eight times earning a return over three percent per asset which ncb are the close um return at the market cap for ncb there and i'm return three percent and then myself it below eight times earning come on and then i have more debt and more per cash for them book and then my right. infrastructure it, it, yeah, yeah. NCB NCB um PE ratio as I right now is seven point zero three. Um, as I say, the close. What's the return per what's the, what's the return per asset? Give me a second. ROE. Let me check my return on asset is twenty or twenty one point eight five. Okay. That's still on trailing. Eh? That's still on trailing. Return per oh, asset. Return like asset. Oh, I'm thinking it's a yeah, return at equity. Oh. No equity, I look for another dog. Equity, me I look for another dog. I think we have to go pull up another dog. Three percent, man, or two point five percent. Yeah, somewhere there. Uh, a good. Uh, my personal opinion. Can I tell everybody this personally? Ruan, personal opinion. Not Lance, not anybody. It's my personal opinion. Ah, uh, God, grand. Just, just, just load up our NCB for the next ten months. You know, I regret it. Trust me. Man, I'm not in the program. Uh, I think NCB return on assets had fallen during the pandemic, you know, significantly. But I see where long term it's a good company, and company like Ruan, not here in your Ruan. Let me check. Not here in your. You're saying something Ruan? No, no, I'm not saying. Oh, oh, so it's a it's a company good for the long term. I think it's a, it's a great company. Um. If you look at the other banks like JMMB and Scotia, they're good companies, but I, I expect slower capital appreciation in the long term. And Scotia, in Scotia case, no, they I think they're one of the most consistent dividend payers. Um, but if I if if it's capital appreciation, <laughs> I don't think you're gonna find it there as much. As what NTB? Scotia, Scotia. Oh. Is that a dividend? Is a is that more? I say it could be a dividend king if you had such a term for Jamaican market. Word of caution, do I remember NCB has appeared dividend in, in in what like two years? Yeah. No, them not them not them not pay them not pay no, yeah. I, them not pay no. Are them pay zero point? No, NCB not pay a dividend a good time no ma. But the thing is no. It not make sense to pay a dividend when you acquire it, businesses. It, 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 say, oh, I think you know. The reason why they're not paying a dividend of a, of a straight them capital adequacy ratio, you know. Mm. So it's, yeah, not, it's almost like they're not prepared for the weather in our sense. You get me? So here yeah. what? When we look and at them alone, so, huh? and then them alone, nobody are paying dividend. Financial institutions, remember 
No, if man, the Bank like, of Jamaica, they, they prohibit yeah, them from paying dividends. Yeah. But yeah. even after that, NCB continues not paying any dividend. Yeah. You get me? But at the end of the day, all right, just as we talk about BOJ, tell them, say, yo, no paying no dividends. That was to ensure so them have adequate capital enough. Uh, you know, US dollar go overseas and them billions and all that. So, so you said, no, NCB now paying no dividends. I really the capital adequacy ratio. BOJ give them a capital adequacy ratio with them for all, you know, like 10% you know, off whatever asset them have out there, if you understand how it works. JMMB, and this is the reason why me love JMMB. JMMB yeah. has been performing. JMMB has been performing like JMMB capital adequacy ratio are two times what the bank tell them for all. So if the bank say all 10%, JMMB are 15%, 16%, 20%. Barita as well. NC, yeah. NC, yeah, Barita has is well capitalized. Right, is well structured fast down. NCB still, NCB themselves are all 10%, NCB are all 11%, my dad. Right upon the edge. And that's the reason why they love NCB because they're aggressive. But you see now that the storm has come, them kind of, wow, when the storm, them start, you know what I mean? Storm okay. coming. Caution. Speaking of storm, so, were you expecting a recession? I mean, the US market is in a, in a mild recession. Yeah, US market. It's then a recession already, but it's a recession that's kind of different from the traditional recession where we know it. Because we always know. Mm-hmm. All right, so the economy <laughs> operating a whatever they call it, a peak and a chow. Yeah. Yeah, so it go up there, so then it come back down. Normally, when it go up on top, you normally have like your labor. It's normally labor cost that triggers inflation, you know. So mm-hmm. when you're expanding, you start employ everybody you can expand. I mean, you can't employ. And the more people you employ, the more wages have to pay out. And then the people will get the wages out, them turn around and buy the goods them. So demand increase and that push up inflation. See? And then the central bank could have to come, come now and kind of start out that. But what we see happening is that inflation has increased, central banks start increase them rate to start out the inflation fire over there. Yeah. But you see, the US market continues to employ more people. In July, them saw 500, almost 28,000 people employed. Why? Why is that so, though? Eh? Why do you think that happened? No, what may I say, the market has really reached a peak yet. So it still have room for expand, even though GDP, I think. Them start, them start cut, them start cut the job them more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple yeah. companies start cut, but overall net. That's because market. that because of the, 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 the monetary base expansion by the central bank cause them to have a lot of cash they could hire. But, yeah, yeah. So, so what we're what we see now with the inflation is that we think even though you see inflation are calm down away, we think the inflation you will have some pressure from 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 the wages. You have stock. You more fear of stock inflation. So because of the because of the interest rates hike and the prevailing yeah. and, and, and the prevailing inflationary pressure, you have a period of low technological advancement where the economy start deep because of a stock inflation. So you know I'm gonna be a, a jerk like in a um 2008 or 2019 that come boom because of the of the how it has been it's a long term this cycle of it on itself now so you have yeah, a very yeah. slow down and another the america alone globally so how so you have high high expense ratio for businesses inflation cars wage and that's a wage and you just have a, a slow more growth you have, have people become over the next five years probably have more people unemployed than what we have now mm-hmm. so, yeah and i think other factors contribute to it the other global c- crisis um things like the war the energy price and also um you know the uh, real estate market and those things so we have a next uh question here someone asks in guard where do you expect ncb to be next five years ask me specifically where i expect guard lana risa Yes, God. i've not i have not even looked at ncb to that 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 is, but if I was supposed to not advise, um, I think it might drop a bit more. Personally, I kind of hope say it, it drop just a little bit more to maybe around about eighty five 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, run there so and then must start by because if you continue based on that earning, that means that P going also drop, which means there will be a shorter duration. If you know how P works, by so the way, yeah, the God, without yeah. that break, yeah, without that break, yeah, tell me, yeah, what, yeah, what, ACB. So, yeah, what, ACB. Right, you're not giving a direct answer, then. <laughs> and oh. You don't have to give a direct answer. So, what, what I would say. I mean, you expect it to be a business that's still here in the next five years, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. So we can just give us, we don't have to give a specific number or anything. So we can leave it at that. Just buy NCB, man, if you like NCB. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyone look at Elite Diagnostic? Elite? Elite, Elite. Yeah, man, we do a valuation of Elite and Blue Color Finance channel. What, 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 you can give us a summary what you think. Someone... Just ask about, let me see where the question is. Tell me the name of the person. Let me see if I want my subscribers. Ian yeah. Williams. Um, Ian. Wait, wait, let me see. No. Ian, Ian, Ian Williams. <laughs> Ian, you have to go over Blue Color Finance Channel and subscribe. <laughs> um, elite video over there. But here, the elite, elite thing. <laughs> Since so elite, what do we call elite? What, what service elite up, um, offers? Diagnostic imaging, seen. So, the problem we have with, we have with Elite is that the, the machines that Elite um, uses to do the imaging, whatever, the scan TV scan, the scanning and, and some, some something, there's some name of the can ever pronounce. You have to see them to pronounce them. Those machines are very expensive, seen. And they break down a lot, seen. So, for Elite to operate, you know, Elite has to continually purchase those machines. So those machines are very expensive. And that is what is taken away from the Elite profit. So we see we have the margins. And then to the, the, the people that man the machine are experts. I have to pay them high wages for them services. So because I don't know, when I look at expenses, like administrative expenses, plus the depreciation, that is about 50%, you know, I thought is off the revenue where Elite generate. So if them generate $10, they might pay about 50% or $5 for them expenses. And then profit, I mean, finance costs and taxes will come from the next $5. So Elite have very thin margins. Problem that. You get me? So what we do is to look at the turnover. Oh, well... Or let put it the next way. How much money each machine generate? That is what we look at. So in the league on the branch, the other day, they put one um, TC scan machine up there, and that add to the revenue significantly. You can see, you can see the improvement. Each time the machine them break down, you can see the drop off in the revenue and the drop off in the profit. So the machine is what we have a problem with. You get me? But them have room to expand. Like in other parishes, them just there about three locations. Them have, I mean, Jamaica wide. So, for them expanding other parishes and in expanding, the business can grow from 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 that perspective. But the growth will be limited due to the fact that these machines, them have to continually are investing at these machines and they are very expensive. So when we value it about three dollar, three dollar. Little bit we value elite. We say elite are trade somewhere there about. So we say elite fairly valid at this point. You get me? All so, right. Yeah. All right. So um I had initially planned this life to be one hour, but we are Lance going the content we are looking at land. So I'm tier one. <laughs> going go to the people two hours. For the people I'm gonna watch uh, you have 30 people I watch lands. Well, let me see. Let me see the <laughs> next question. Then, let me see the next question. And then we take two more. Uh, your, what are your views on Massey? Um, Gart, Gart, have you, you looked at Massey? No, I, I never looked at Massey personally. And uh, is, a, is it the craft stitch stock? Yeah, yeah, the cross is that that was um listed for it was listed. the company. It company. I mean, 
Pardon me? I'm not fun of cross listed stocks. Why? Well, based on even height. So if a company, I don't like cross listed stock because one, the stock price barely moves from there because you can have persons in Jamaica buying or persons in Jamaica selling and then you have other persons buying. But most times is persons in one country holding and then another selling or the buying and selling of it from the cross listing kind of not really make it move. There's this thing with, with Trinidad, especially when it's listed on Trinidad, you know, Trinidad have, have picked the US dollar. So what would happen normally, and at least I know this with JMMB, is that when Trinidad will buy the stock in their TT dollars in Jamaica, they can sell it on the Jamaica Stock Exchange and get Jamaican dollars, which they can then convert into US dollars, which they can then use and do whatever. So one capital kind of leaves the US dollar leaves the country, and then it kind of hampers the stock price. And that was what happened, what was happening with, with um, GK before some turn event and it decided to pop off. And it's the same thing kind of technically I'm with um, JMMB right now. And that is why you see them announce they them buy back shares, they click up kind of listen to the amount available in circulation to some extent. Personally, what's about I never... NCB? What's about NCB, which are cross listed company? <laughs> As I tell you, like, cross from the company cross listed for some reason, I don't know. But just feel like, say, yo, it continuously um, just pampered. You didn't really get much movement on him, something there, like the regular other stuff. Because even at the mid, um, NCDC just kind of gradually go down, go down, go down. I'm sure persons who have a lot in it kind of worry. And it's the same thing so, with So, COVID, God, you know? sir, you think, you think that the cross list is going to affect NCB currently? No, but personally, I'm not sure about NCB. You know about. But you know it is, it is affecting JMB. Yeah, it affects affect JMB. And that is why they, they put out the news and I buy it. But they've been buying it before then. So there is that. They mean I buy up but them stock little little for kind of reduce the whole circulation. Cause they know it, but it's kind of under the hush hush. So there is that. Personally, I haven't looked at Massey um since it was cross listed, but what I noticed was that it was a stock that wasn't so as liquid because recently when they crossed the state, I realized that Jamaican investors have a thing about price. They look at the price. But the business itself, mm -hmm. it's, like a, it's a solid business. But I couldn't give a say on the valuation at the current point, at this current point in time. This is something that I could explore in the future directly. Yeah, one of them but, blue chip company there. One of them blue chip company will have them on in a lot of markets, no? Yeah, yeah, man. yeah they sell yeah. gas and them in, they're a very run a very good run company. Yeah, man. If you can get that company at a, at a good price, I buy an all for the long term. Them yeah. Heavy in a gas, yeah, them heavy in a um even the oxygen and anything that flow through the pipe, or we have a sort of medical supplies. Them, yeah. them heavy in insurance, reinsurance services. Them heavy in remittance. They're, they're very good conglomerate. It's like so a like, GK. It's yeah. Like a GK point two. Yeah, and, and the leader who run it, um, John, I think his name is John Lack. He's one of the chairman also. He was a very good businessman. Historically, he run Guardian. Mm, and that's why even them did stick um as long as they say oh the stock price um Jamaica really possible stock price and that's why them did even do the stock split because it was at remember for two thousand or something like that and then them split it down to one to twenty or one to five something like that to so make it get more accessible to the regular person. Cause even though at two grand, even I see it as two grand, I'm say oh yo that's too expensive for that. Sure, so, sure, sure. I, I so honestly, I saw like when he legit just started invest. I know what they're gonna buy in a grace, and then at that time, when I started invest, um, JMB had this thing where you only can buy a hundred units. So basically, if I have ten grand, I can buy arm grace. If I have hundred thousand dollars, I can buy a policy. So that was kind of like a barrier to entry for like certain persons. I mean, that psychology is spiral. I think it's a psychology that 
that we'll have to do more as YouTubers to try to educate the public. So I'm going to do a video on it, um, yeah. the price. But it was a thing that I noticed with the Jamaican market. Yeah. But as investors get more knowledge, these things will they'll become more aware that the price is not really the price. If the price, if I see a stock with a stock for two thousand dollar, that doesn't mean that it cannot be undervalued. So it's something that new investors have to try to understand the difference between value and price. True, um, true, true. I think Jamaica okay. is a good, a good trading ground, Tony. See, if you're a fundamental investor, you want to hold stocks for the long run, a really good, a really good place for investor. Yeah. So, I'm going to take one more question and that is it for tonight. We might have to do another live and next time, I don't want to go over two Lance, where you need to no, go to oh. get the Lance. No, man, call. Cool. Because I say you see the something here. Yeah? yeah. You need to make it a part of your program where you do, oh, this is what we do. Yeah. You don't think it's successful? Yeah, yeah. That's definitely. Mr. White. We just come on and talk every now and then. Yeah, every 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 exactly. two months or so we can do a R exactly. every two months we can do a link up and we can do yeah, more. It live. makes sense. It makes sense. So definitely i have to give thanks to all the persons that that uh, that turn out to view our live and i hope you have learned something so i want to take the last question and then that is it basically for no we, we we're gonna <laughs> let me see that transition so the only other question I see is that about uh, careers. Let's say I invest five million in a dividend stock like careers, then use my dividend of 10% of 450,000 to buy growth stock. I'm not understanding that um, the, the way they do the question. I'm saying we can go up on it because me need to come up by it because that's what I'm saying. Which which way is that? You know, the sentence structure. I want to look at another question. If that person can do, can type, retype the question, that would be good. But I want to look at the next question. Mm. So. All right, the last question I want to say is that um, person comment that Jamaican stock market perform, perform better than US stock market. So uh, you guys overall, you think that if you want, for just a, you can just give us short answer. You think that if you want more opportunities, one should look more at the, the junior market over the, the main market. What, what, are your, what, what is your, your opinion on this matter? I think Sorry, at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, you search value, anywhere value there, you, 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 you pick up whatever value you can get. At times, the main market companies that might sell at, at discounted price, we don't want to left a discounted price simply because it depends on the main market as against the junior market. So anyway, you can find value, just go for value. I mean, Junior market companies are normally smaller companies and are expected to grow. I mean, with smaller companies, future growth seems larger, bigger. But at the end of the day, we see where a lot of main market companies double and triple and grow yeah. at faster pace than you know, you know, junior market companies. So I think I just search the values and just get the value wherever you can pick it up. Me and our junior, it doesn't yeah. even matter. No one mean company and they are they are just a grow under the radar was SOS. Like you know, no, when no, SOS it's a junior, you know. Oh, it's a junior? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's junior. One of them good companies, yes. They call it under the radar, blue color finance of beat that from day one. <laughs> like, you know, you're gonna hear much, you know, hear much about it now, like the main news and them things. No, because the at the end of the day, you can't watch it. You can't watch the main thing. The main thing of them own objective, you know. Oh yeah. 
You have to be very careful with it, you know. I'm going to do something to you. See if you can. When I say, yo, if you're only specifically talking about Jamaica, but one of the reasons why um, most people, when they ask me about investments, I always say, yo, invest. If you can invest outside Jamaica, you have to look also and hedging the dollar. And it has, yeah. it has done, done a wonder for me. You see me? Because Lance Mine knows I'm mostly overseas with my events. I'm a who am a purchasing power. When most people there are investing with my return might be half a few business points, but my purchasing power, did it? So yeah, just can't hold your horizon to Jamaica alone. If you have the opportunity, look outside too. Oh yeah, um Lance. So the person was well, Chipmunk Finance. I think them calculation just did slightly off. So basically they're saying if they invest $5 million in the career, which is a dividend paying stock, then use the 10% where they might get as dividend to reinvest back into growth capital so they don't lose their principal. I think the reason why they put 450 was because maybe they had to go to 50%, but um, 15% would be 75 k So it would more likely be $425,000 for investing in a growth stock. For maintaining capital appreciation. So that is basically an art. So okay. that. Oh. Well, I wouldn't, I mean, if I'm investing in growth stocks, I wouldn't look to reinvest one dividend to go. I'm just going straight growth or straight dividend. That's what I would do. So I don't know, what would you, would you enjoy in that case? Me? Yeah. Oh well, as I right now, as I did say, oh, my dividend stock them never work more than the people them they are sin. So it never really made much sense. But as time go on and go on, I use that dividend to reinvest back in the same company, which is careers. So I don't necessarily know about the growth part of it. But the idea that the person has seen that in some sense they want to just maintain the principal. Is a, is, a, is, a, is a relatively good idea. So one year at least I expect a certain kind of cash flow and seeing the career has paid quarterly, I basically have four chances to buy into the market or buy into the growth stock um, each year. So it's, it's a relatively good, good strategy, but my dividend is dividend reinvested back into the company, but this person dividend, they want to use it and buy other companies. So it, it's, a, it's a good idea, I guess. You're getting about the cash flow and still maintaining your capital is a good way to go about it. Yeah, good passive income if, if I want to invest in other companies. Yeah, capital not, gain over dividends anytime, but not my strategy. But I, it's, it's, it's a strategy, but yeah, still, yeah, nonetheless. So, um, I want to any closing remarks or anyone, um, Ron. Yeah, I'm glad some day have a reason with the man, the man, the people. Then. All right, all right. So, thanks to all the guys that come in, Ruan, Blue Color, Guard. Thanks for passing through. After, shout out to everyone who has, has been viewing our live. It's been a pleasure to help, to understand, help you to understand the market as we discuss and learn ourselves. Because there's some things that I'm here and I've heard for the first time. So that's the thing when you talk with other investors, you learn from each other. So in the few, that's one thing with networking. So I want everyone to stay safe and look forward to our next our next live sometime in the nearby future. Do not than them expect lads. Say that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good vibe, man. Yeah, we love it. No. Yeah. And also, before I go, one more thing. So you can check out Gar Grant and Blue Color. If you, if you're the first time you're on my channel, subscribe and share, share the videos and like. Go out of a channel too? Yeah, go out of a channel. Um, ah. subscribe to Blue Color already, because Blue Color is going to know everything one of thing. Yeah. Blue Color Blue Color yeah. cover the local man. <laughs> Very good. I, I, I like that. I like how we cover the local The man, man. The man I put on the back door and I'm like, you see Blue Fire, you can't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> For my Very channel, uh, you know, I, I have um, somebody in the comments just to say what they want to know about different companies and how they make money and something here. So we kind of have to put it there, I work on. So, I'm man, like... I love it. I love it. I see you do the PBS on it, bud. 
I'm going to try, yo. Trust me, man. The next week, I get a, a camera, so the, the videos are more consistent. Me is a Samsung man, iPhone, and 5G. So, yeah, yeah. but it's a, it's a, so, vibe, just a, a few companies coming out. One interesting is the lab. Yeah. And Trans as well. I also have JMMB, but I kind of hold off on JMMB because when I I approach JMMB, I approach JMMB decent, guys. Yo, if any JMMB ambassador there, ready to be a brand ambassador. So, I approach it proper, is me? But the rest of them, I have like about 14 companies already. But, you know, my editing style, you know, be it different than just come and talk. So, yeah. It's a good look. All right. So, I'm going to leave your guy, I'm going to leave your, your, your guy channel in the com in the description so yeah, persons time. will be able to find your channel um so that's it so i'm out we're out for today so take care guys everyone my g all right yo, let's yeah, yeah.